Welcome to the Leaders Room. Today we're talking with Professor Bassem Yunus, who is the Director of Strategic Alliances at the Dubai School of Government. Welcome, <laughs> Professor Bassem. We're so delighted to have you here. Thank you very much. Um, I really enjoyed speaking with you uh, just a few moments ago about where the Dubai School of Government came from. It's been around for about 10 years. I think you started around 2005. 2005. So indeed. tell us the story. How did the Dubai School of Government come to be? The Dubai School of Government was one of the initiatives that we have been very uh, fortunate to have. And it was part of the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, ruler of Dubai, to set up an entity or a unit that would actually train and ensure that the best skills and best abilities of the government employees were being developed in a way to serve the city's uh, uh, ambitions and, and growth and to always ensure that we were aligned with best practices wherever that was. What was his inspiration? Very simple. Being number one. This is something Sheikh Mohammed is very, sort of a Dubai very famous. Thing, isn't Absolutely, it? <laughs> uh, Sheikh Mohammed's inspiration has always been, as we have learned ourselves from repeated lessons, but we realize very well that it is a passion for excelling. It's an excellence. It's a passion for excellence. The idea is that, and I would quote this. This is something I've. It's one of the uh, one of the most. I think if you see it, it's, it's probably fit to be used. Whatever it says, in the race for excellence there is no finish line and we have to remember that and clearly if you want to continue in a race and if you want to achieve excellence I think this is where it comes from achieving excellence how would you achieve excellence in what you do by trying to always follow the best practice and ensuring that you are delivering at the highest possible uh, level of quality and and, 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 and standard, basically. And one of your strategies for doing that has been to create strategic alliances, right, which is the job that you've got. So who did you partner with, or who have you been partnering with along the way? Well, initially, uh, the school was set up in very close collaboration with the Harvard Kennedy School, clearly. And along the way, we have had a number of uh, strategic alliances that were put in place mm -hmm. to serve the interests of the school. And I want to say that the interest of the school is served through three different uh, venues, basically, because the Dubai School of Government has three, in the, three separate and three different uh, aspects of okay. business. Uh, the Dubai School of Government has an academic program, which leads to a degree in public administration, a master's degree in public administration. And this is just as much of an academic program as any program you'd find in any university. So technically, Dubai School of Government is a university offering yeah. okay. a one postgraduate degree. And for that, we have to conform and, you know, uh, of Here's course, meet of all the standards of accreditation. And we are accredited by the Ministry of Higher Education, in, in, which is the highest accreditation body in the land, in the UAE, okay. an internationally recognized body too. We have the research arm as well, which really has been very uh, in the forefront of leading applied research in several areas, including e-governance and in, including uh, women and gender issues and, and uh, knowledge management as well. We've had like uh, three significant programs, as well as executive education. Okay. And this was very important because you want to take the extract or the best of your research and your academic program and faculty and be able to give this and offer it to those very busy executives who you cannot afford to take away from their responsibilities for any extended commitment or period yeah. of time. And they're also in highly leveraged spots. They're, they're at a more senior level and so if they can take your ideas, incorporate them in their Absolutely. own organizations, it'll make a difference very quickly. You, you have to try and give them that sort of uh, solution pill, you know, which yeah. means <laughs> it's really there, done, prepared, ready, or ready meal, what you, what you call it. And we've been very good at meal this, ready. I think. And along the way, we've partnered with partners that have met the, 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 or aligned with the, with, the, with the vision or the strategy of this school. Right. So these partnerships are not a fixed thing, as you can tell. So each part of the organization has as to align with, exactly, it has a strategic alliance that befits and serves to best deliver and contribute to the objectives and to the expected outcomes as well. Okay. So Professor Bassam, your, your mission at the Dubai School of Government is to bring forward excellence 
and to bring forward excellence, particularly in governance. How would you describe what excellence in governance really is? What does it really mean, whether it's in the Arab world or elsewhere? Uh, I think the easiest way to, to put it and, and to state it is to serving people in the best and least complicated way and ensuring that your people are happy. Again, the whole objective of governance is to serve and I think it's very important to keep this in mind and to ensure that your services are delivered with a touch of, uh, I would say, uh, ease and, and, and lack of uh, complications or unnecessary bureaucracies. Yeah, make it easy for people to benefit from the government, not hard for them to benefit absolutely. from the government. It's making right? not just the benefit, but yeah, absolutely. People need to be able to access whatever services they need in a pleasant and honorable manner which allows them to get their uh, services delivered and, and feel uh, valued and feel uh, respected at the same time. Well, that all sounds very lovely, but I mean, I've been to many, a motor vehicle bureau and uh, passport office and elsewhere in the world that I wouldn't say fits that description. What exactly is happening in the UAE or in Dubai or in any sphere that you're aware of that actually fulfills that mission that makes dealing with the government not just, not just possible, but in fact a pleasure? I will tell you what, I think <clears throat> you're asking about that recipe for, for success. What is the recipe? We are enjoying, and I would say this, uh, even though it might be uh, seen to be a bit uh, uh, biased coming from me in my position, but let me, when I, when I joined the Dubai School of Government, I think one of the things I enjoyed most is because I am also a, a customer at the end of the day. I receive That's government true. services, and I get very involved, and I have had the chance to be able to compare services that I receive with those I've received in my years of living abroad or, or, or you know, as a student or as, as whatever. So it's been very useful to, to look at things. And as you said, you, you've just cited an example that I want to pick on. And if you'd said anything else, I would have probably had another good example for you. <laughs> but let me go at this immigration issue that you referred to. Okay. In Dubai, for example, and this is something that very few people find they can't even understand, but I'll tell you one thing. Our experiences, you know, you need to go to an immigration department for various reasons, whether it is to renew a passport, whether it is to sponsor uh, uh, someone who works in your house, or if you have a business, you need to sponsor workers. So an immigration department is a very important, important and significant. It touches everybody's Absolutely. life in a way. Absolutely. Initially, our services were limited to this one main building where everybody had to go to this one central building and everybody, and it was really, in a way, it wasn't very difficult, but the idea of everybody coming on to this converging one place, into converging into this one, one location. Business corner, yeah. A few years ago, there was a creative element based on the Dubai strategy and concept of governance, where today in almost every major shopping center in Dubai, there is a, an immigration office. Huh. And you can go in there and do your shopping and everything is so organized and they've got targets for the time, a maximum time that they work with as a key performance index in which time they have to turn around the service and that the person cannot wait for over and above a certain period of time. So these centers are everywhere. And by the way, because the main files are centralized, you can access any of these offices in any of these shopping malls in any time. So they it's 100% automated. No, but you, go, you, know, you deal with people, absolutely, yeah. but the, the access to the records and the, to the, the files, back, the, absolutely. Behind the, behind the counter, yeah. Now, what's better? I'll tell you one better. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes, you know, a lot of, we hear about a lot of stories whereby you're coming to travel, and by the time you get to the airport, either you've, your passport is, is, is expired, or you don't have enough time to allow your permit you to go, and you're already decided, and what do you think? You have to cancel the flight? No, we don't. We have a passport office in the airport, which would issue for citizens, of course, a brand new passport on the spot and you continue with their journey. So imagine the time wow. it takes between you coming to check in, realizing that you cannot, your passport is not valid Something's or whatever. Wrong, yeah. And by the time you get it fixed and you're on that same flight and your departure did not delay. I mean, wow. you tell me, what, 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 what do you think? I mean, this is beyond, I think, I think in some cases, I will be very upfront here if you allow me to say this. Yeah. And I would say that for a long time, one of the Dubai reasons for success was to always pursue best practice. Okay. Look at best practice wherever it is. Well, I was going to say, what about and the Dubai ports, right? Now you're exporting port 
technology we, and expertise around the world, right? We are managing other ports and Exactly. Airport. And our, is this going to be happening with passport services elsewhere in the world as well? well? I think we've been mandated that if anybody asks for our help mm -hmm. or for our support or for our advice, I think it is available. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to, we, we are happy to share and we're happy to, but I'll tell you one thing, the Dubai experience, people have to understand that the Dubai experience cannot simply be taken as a cut and paste job. Yeah. If you cut it from Dubai, you have to paste it back in Dubai. There's a lot of things that make that happen, you see. Yeah, yeah, it's a very It is very specific, thing. really. So it's a network. I would tell you one thing. The, the, you have to realize that the immigration service I mentioned uh -huh. to you would not have been possible or sustainable had not everything else in the, in, the, in, the, in the sphere facilitated exactly. and helped this in terms of connectivity, communications, uh, policies, uh, regulations, security. I mean, remember, it's all a network that is aligned. So the success, I think, and one of the other factors for a key success to governance is aligning all of the government's elements. services and organizations very clearly. They have to be aligned. Yes, they would have different strategies. Yes, they would have different approaches. Yes, they would have different deliverables. But if that does not happen on the basis of a, a, a single sort of alliance and focus, mm -hmm. it would be very difficult to accommodate because... Well, it requires a lot of people to be thinking very holistically around everything that needs to happen and and the usual barriers that you think of as occurring in a in a government you know this department versus that department versus yeah. that department that has to melt away we have an experience that we are very proud of and it's called the Dubai Executive Council mm -hmm. the Dubai Executive Council is a council that meets once a week or as needed by the heads of all the key departments services in in Dubai mm -hmm. You know, the local departments in Dubai are pretty much sort of like your state government and their different ministries or, 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 or departments, mm -hmm. like we call them director generals. Right. And these guys meet, so all the main plans in line with the Dubai strategy are discussed and shared, so everybody knows what the others are doing as well. So everybody is working as a team. I mean, this is another thing. So when you're teaching governance in your schools, you're, you're teaching this sort of thing, this sort of holistic thinking, the cross-boundary work, the common mission, all the kinds of skills, behaviors, attitudes that you're talking about right now that are taking place in the Dubai government, that's also what you're teaching in your school. Uh, to confirm what I don't teach at the school myself, that one, but I will that tell is you, taught in the school. Absolutely, this yeah. is taught, and we have realized very, very recently, but we've mm -hmm. applied this, yeah. that the best teachers, especially in our executive education courses, mm -hmm. we have started to draw heavily on those experts within the Dubai government. Mm -hmm. We have some very established people. Mm -hmm. who have been very academically qualified, of course, academically qualified, mm -hmm. and more so as practitioners, they have led departments in achieving the change. And it's fascinating. I attend some of these sessions myself. There are some like key names and key people that come to the school. Yeah. And I find it very enjoyable when I can spare the time, of course, to sit there and you know, enjoy, because these are people referring. They're not just talking. You know something, I'll tell you this. I'll share this with you from my academic past life, I would mm -hmm. say. The worst thing that you has happened. You have a happened, PhD in civil engineering, correct? And I taught, yes, and I taught a few, a few th years as well in, yeah. in, 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 in the civil university in the UAE in civil engineering mm -hmm. and in engineering economy as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the worst thing that has happened to education, because of, of course, the the populations and and the world, uh, for many years I think one of the reasons that people managed to achieve was that people who were knowledgeable in a subject ended up teaching that subject themselves. So you went to a certain university because this person who wrote this book would teach this book. I was very fortunate in my earlier years of studying under people who wrote actually the same books we were, we were reading. Yeah. This has since changed. So a lot of people go to university to learn what somebody else, th not necessarily through the same, I mean, they were never even mentored by the author. So they were taught the world has the gotten ideas pretty big. or the knowledge of somebody yeah, else. The world has gotten pretty They big. had their yeah. own perception or understanding of it, and they took it their way, and they taught it to others as well. Mm -hmm. Now, what we realize is when we bring these practitioners on, 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 the, on the scene, and they start, they talk, they are able to link the theory and the practice. Yeah, that's right. And in fact, I think I, I feel fun. very confident to say that I do believe that in the Dubai experience today, we will actually be able, we should be able to take some of the actual practices we have and try to link or to associate them with a new theory in the field because they do actually come out of the box, very clearly out of the box. Yeah. The minute you are able to free yourself from 
the reservations or the fear of not being able, why can't it happen? We will find, why can't it happen? If it is fine, if it makes sense, we're going to break through anything and we're going to move on to, to, to move with changing times. So how much can you as a school export this way of thinking given that actually the attitudes and the ways of thinking are as important and they're the essential precursor to anybody being able to adopt these new practices? Well, it is, it is not, I will, I will tell you, it's, it's, our job is pretty much uh, cut for us in Dubai mm -hmm. because we are living the experience. Yeah, yeah. We are not far from it. We feel it. We yeah. see it in our news. We, we feel it in our practice. We all want to do this. We all want to be involved and we all want to share in, the, mm -hmm. in what's happening. You know, it's, it's yeah. really, uh, it, 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 you can't be, you don't, you don't want to be left it's out. It's very exciting. You don't, it is very exciting. Thank you. It, it is a buzz. And you do it and you're enjoying it because it's been, we've managed, I think this is the, the, the thing is removing all the negative sort of, you see when you say immigration. Competition. I, yeah, I can say immigration every day with a smile on my face because I know that the services, I can access the services pretty much frequently, anytime mm -hmm. I want. We've got, by the way, an emergency office that does all the other things 24 hours a day, seven days a week attached to the airport. So there is creativity and people in authority or people who have been responsible in delivering governance mm -hmm. have been also mandated or trusted with being creative to see how they can improve things they did not inherit systems and kept them dead you know yeah. they have moved on yeah. and they have tried to improve and to go on with times as well to be able to utilize the latest of available technologies mentalities whatever you call it adaptive being adaptive i think governance Adaptive governance with the same objective of leading to the betterment of people's lives and dealings and services is really... Do you trace this back at all to Sheikh Zayed, Sheikh Rashid, Sheikh Mohammed? I mean, do you sort of trace them back to starting this or is this even a, you know, sort of a more modern manifestation of the general entrepreneurship no. and innovation that no, you see? Absolutely. I will, we have to be uh, absolutely fair and sincere about this too. Yeah. We were as fortunate as many other countries that had similar. In fact, we came late to the to the wealth club, possibly in the in the in the oil sector and things. Mm -hmm. However, if it hadn't been for our visionary leadership yeah. that had existed from the start, we were blessed, to be honest with you. Yeah. I would tell you there was. There we were. You see, it's just like when when you have a caretaker. And you have, we, have a, we had these very few but very capable individuals who took care of a nation altogether at difficult times with little resources, but they managed to actually move on and adapt to the changing circumstances and to invest. I mean, what our leadership did, what it had the vision and the commitment to the country itself. A lot of our investments were made in-house, as they say, yeah. in the country itself with the belief and the strength who would have believed that, and again, when I say visionary, visionary is very important. Who would have believed that Dubai would become a tourist mecca? Who would have ever wanted to come to Dubai when temperatures would soar? And today, I tell you one thing, I, would, I, would, I feel compromised. Sometimes I travel and I go to places, but it's becoming more and more difficult to find a place where you would feel that you're getting good value for the time or the life you're spending away from Dubai, Yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you want to go, I mean, we've got it all there. Seriously, it's, it's all there. It's all done to a standard. We've including taken Including the skis. Including the skis. Yeah. Whatever you have is, is right there. And we're yeah. enjoying, we're enjoying the, 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 of course, clearly it's very important to keep going and yeah. to travel and to see, of course, how things are, because you cannot just keep looking I've at I've never heard such enthusiasm for corporate governance, or for, for governance before and, and country governance, but I can see uh, what an effect yeah. It has how excited one can be it is. about uh, running a country well, right down to the departments that everybody interacts with every day that clearly it affects their life. Absolutely. But as yeah. I said, I mean, going back to your question, absolutely. We've been, we're blessed with the visionary leadership and the continuity of that leadership. To tell you the truth, mm -hmm. it's enough. I mean, if, if that leadership, the vision of the earlier time, I mean, we were blessed that during each major era, or stage of this country's life, yeah. we had the right, a, a, the, right gener the right leadership again yeah. in, in charge and in leading this forward. And that's why we continue, and I hope we always continue to. So what lessons, what lessons, I, I realize it's hard to take one practice and pull it out, like you said, and, and just plonk it somewhere, but what lessons would you like, even if they're more general lessons, even if they're more sort of principles, do you wish 
you could export from Dubai to the rest of the world, whether the United States, Britain, Europe. In terms of governance, what, what do you feel that you've really learned from practice in Dubai that the rest of the world really should be paying attention to? Uh, I mean, I think what I would like to say, I can't be specific, because I think what's important is to accept that the, the, the specific circumstances and social sort of particularities. and other particularities, mm -hmm. they will never be. You can look at the Dubai idea that's worked fine in Dubai, but see how to adapt this to your own part. Don't take it as it is and yeah. say it will work here. Yes, some ideas are probably no-brainers. They would work anywhere. Mm -hmm. Simple, easy, yeah. straightforward. But I think you have to be very specific and very careful about linking these ideas with what can actually be achieved on the ground as well. I still have to feel that this somehow very fundamentally getting under everybody's skin and having them keep at the front of their minds that it really is about the people, which gets forgotten in so many political plays Thank you. around the world. That's what I heard you say, and that's what, I mean, if there's a lesson to be learned, and the particulars will be different, and you know, the scale of Dubai is different, and the culture is different, and all that, but still, the fundamental principle of, you've got to keep in mind that you exist for the people. And that is something that really gets forgotten a lot of different places in a lot of different ways which is why we get hung up legislation in the United States, and it's why we end up with revolutions elsewhere. If there's some way that that could just be better accepted. I wish, you know, as you said clearly, I mean, we have, we have I think the key, and I will mm -hmm. say this again, we have a very strong and, well, very committed and very engaged leadership, yeah. engaged at all levels. I'm not saying this, I mean, this is not like a propaganda or anything, yeah, but yeah. this is something we believe. can prove. No, we can show as well. I mean, I believe, yeah. I remember I'm an engineer. Yeah. As an engineer, I would be very careful what to say unless I can have this very clearly measured, quantified mm -hmm, evidence. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it. So I'm, I'm going to talk as a, <laughs> I've used my engineering for this purpose here now. Yes. We have very engaged leadership with clear engagement demonstrated at all levels, at various levels. Very, very engaged, very, very involved. And I think this is what is important. You need to create, to keep that link. It's no point trying to do your leadership by remote control yeah. and by not being there yourself. Yeah. And I would tell you at all levels, of all levels of leadership, because again, the major or the main leadership has set a very clear example and model. And when you see your own sort of leadership practicing certain things, you as a second or a third level leader cannot afford to be less. You cannot, because you go exactly what you say. The standards are high. Yeah. We've been fortunate because the standards are so high, we are getting this quality because the various leadership levels, and when we see leadership, we have to acknowledge that leadership is not again one size fits all. It varies, it requires different traits and, and different skills, depending on the situation the and in and the, the position. And the, the, and the type and of challenge, yeah. Exactly. So we've been very fortunate, but again, as I said to you, the main thing is that the main, the stakes are high, and the, the standards are high, and it's actually hands-on, hands-on, which makes a lot of difference, really, in ensuring that this is being done the right way. Well, I have to say, Professor Bassam, this has been very inspirational. Your, your enthusiasm is infectious. And uh, I look forward to learning a lot more about the Dubai School of Government. Thank you. I hope we can. Again, we've been very fortunate with being called the Dubai School of Government. I think our credibility and branding can get no better yeah. than being the Dubai School of Government. I hope we can share the Dubai experience with as many people as there are. But I think you can probably uh, avail from the Dubai experience by being in Dubai yourself and ah. seeing directly and experiencing directly how how it is, and you know, yeah. I think... It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing place. It's an amazing place, and it didn't happen by accident. No, it didn't, and uh, I think the only difficult thing is that we have a very major uh, achievement to preserve, and I'm sorry, I can't say to preserve, because as I said to you, in the it's, race for excellence, it's there is no finish moving. line. That's right, so it's a moving target, move. right? We have to move continually, but this is where this buzz comes from. When you're when you're when you're dynamic, when you're moving, and yeah. when you're achieving, and when you're this is really where it comes. It's it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's very exciting. Thank you, Professor Bossom, and thank you for joining us in the leaders' room. It's a wrap.